And now the EFD and Mr Farage. Well, Mr Brose, not just you, but the entire unelected government of Europe had a chance perhaps for our citizens to reflect on where the real power lies in this union. I I've listened to you for nearly ten years. I full marks for consistency. You know, you're a man that likes fixed ideology. Uh, you probably picked it up when you were a communist or Maoist or whatever you were. Um, and for the last ten years you've pursued Eurofederalism combined with an increasing green obsession. And, and yeah, it's been good uh, for bureaucrats, uh, for big businessmen, for landowners. It's not been a bad decade. Uh, but it's been a disaster for poor people, unemployed people and those on low wages. Uh, the Euro, uh, which you believed would give us monetary stability, uh, has done the very opposite. It was a misconstruction from the start. Uh, and it's pretty clear uh, that youth unemployment at nearly 50% across the Mediterranean um, is probably nearly double what it would have been as a direct result of the misconstruction that is the euro. They're in the wrong currency, uh, but I know that you'll never ever admit to that, and the euro, I think, will die a very slow and painful death. But you're all in denial about that. But it's something that I find really more interesting. You keep telling us that climate change is an absolute top priority. Um, and you've been greeted with almost hysteria in this place over the last 10 years. Well, those of us uh, that have been sceptical about this have been mocked, derided, uh, called deniers. Uh, we've argued from the start that the science wasn't settled. And we've argued very strongly that the measures we're taking to combat what may or may not be a problem are damaging our citizens. And we've been proved to be right. Tens of millions forced into fuel poverty. Um, uh, manufacturing industry being driven um, away because, of course, our competitors in China and in America are going for cheap fossil alternatives. And, of course, wind turbines blighting the landscapes and seascapes of Europe. And still today, you go on about green growth. Well, the consensus is breaking behind you. You know, Commissioner Tajani uh, the other day said uh, that actually we face a systematic industrial massacre. It is time to stop this stupidity and to help you. There's the NASA photograph last August of the ice cap, the northern ice caps. And there is the NASA photograph this year of the ice caps. It is increased by 60% in one year. Leading American scientists are now saying we are going into a period of between 15 and 30 years of global cooling. We may have made one of the biggest, stupidest collective mistakes in history by getting so worried about global warming. You can reverse this in the next seven or eight months. You can bring down people's taxes. If you don't, they'll vote on it in the European elections of next year. Mr. Farage shows that populists are sometimes obscurantists. 99% of the science, Mr. Farage, believes that this climate change exists as a result of human activity. 99% of scientists. Of course, there are always people that are paid to say the opposite. But I, to pretend, as you pretend, that against all science, well-established science, that the problem of climate change is just an invention of the Greens or of the left, it's completely nonsense. Of course we have to find a way. Of course we have to find a sensible way to, do, to fight climate change. We have to look at the same time for competitiveness in Europe. We have to make this part of our agenda for growth, and I believe that the green uh, economy brings many possibilities. Mr. Kellner, you said making a joke about possible competitors for the Commission um, election, that uh, you are not interested in that job, that you are very happy with yours. Let me tell you very frankly that uh, I think even if you were interested, you could not have a chance to be elected for President of the Commission. And, uh, and you know why? I'm not saying that happily, because I think increasingly your party and your group is looking like the UKIP and the Eurosceptic anti-European group. And I start to have some doubts that you are going to be elected yourself in Britain if it's not UKIP that is going to be the first force in the British elections. Because when it comes to be against Europe, when it comes to be against Europe, 
the people prefer between the original and the copy they prefer the original that's probably why they are going to vote more for mr farage than for mr callanan and this i don't say with any kind of satisfaction because if those forces that are pre european or even those that are not really pre european but constructive have the same speech the same political attitude of the anti europeans the euro skeptics the populists in that case they will win the next election so my appeal to you is to make the case for europe now for the efd uh, mr farage please you have the floor well next year's european elections will not be contested on the old division lines of left and right and several group leaders have agreed with that today uh, frankly that's all irrelevant it'll be contested between those of us that believe in national democracy within the nation state and those that believe that the 28 countries that are part of the EU are better governed by these institutions. That, in a sense, is what this comes down to. But, Mr Barroso, those of us that believe in national democracy do not want to take us back to the Western Front on 1914. Those of us that believe in, the, in national democracy will say to you it is a healthy assertion of identity, but it also shows a deeper understanding of why the problems of Europe were caused in the past. It is democratic nation states in Europe that are stable, that will not go to war with each other. And I'd remind people, without the vote in the House of Commons two weeks ago, we would now be at war in Syria. What better proof can there be that nation state democracy can be a force for good? I think that the next election shall not be a big fight between the left and the right. I like that. Eh? Certainly when you're in the center, eh? you have all the, uh, all the problems uh, on your head. 